Imagine holding a piece of history in your hand, a gold coin from the 1800s with its value etched, not just in metal, but in an economic principle long forgotten. Now imagine trying to trade that principle for a Federal Reserve note, a piece of paper whose worth relies on a system that has been eroding for decades. Shocking, right? And here's why you need to pay attention. The value of the dollar, the role of gold, and the rise of Bitcoin are all interconnected. And the story they tell about our financial system is eye-opening. So let's talk about that one. Wanted to take a quick minute, share some thoughts in reference to the interconnectedness of two items that's being viewed right now as safe havens in a world of economic uncertainty. And so it's unfortunate that all the attention is focused on either price appreciation in one, and that's Bitcoin, or the manipulation and price suppression of the other, which is gold and silver. But the overarching problem shouldn't be about the price performance of these asset classes, but the underlying problem in and of itself, which is the currency. So in this video here, I want to share my two cents on some things, further highlight some key distinctions distinctions on why gold and Bitcoin do, do not have to be enemies to each other, but clearly can coexist together if the focus is shifted towards the underlying problem, which is the Federal Reserve note and all the other debt-based fiat currencies. So as always, if you guys want to hear more of these short quick takes, definitely hit that thumbs up button to show your support for the channel. And then beneath this video here, drop a comment and feel free to add to the discussion. Definitely would love to learn more and hear your thoughts on this matter as well. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an update when one is put out. But first of all, the dollar isn't what you think it is. And at this current moment, majority of people don't ask themselves, what really is a dollar? But I bet if you ask Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, you might get a very evasive answer. See, historically, as outlined in the Coinage Act of 1792, the act actually authorized a large assortment of gold and silver specie all the way to the $10 ego at the top, which was minted by the United States Mint from 1795 all the way to 1933, all the way to the very bottom with the half cent, that's right, half of a penny, which was the smallest denomination of the United States coin ever minted. And it was last minted in 1857. And just the fact that they actually had half of a penny that was in circulation lets us know how affordable things must have been back during that era. Could you imagine a half a cent being used for anything now? when you can barely buy anything for a single dollar. And then later came the double eagles, where it says the double eagles were created by the Coinage Act of 1849. Since the $20 gold piece had twice the value of the eagle, these coins were designated as double eagles. And the sad truth is, I bet you nobody in their right mind would have ever thought that things would get so far out of hand to the point where you actually would have to pay 2,800 pieces of paper to actually get a similar type of gold coin in your possession, not even considered usable money anymore. And this divergence started in 1971. President Nixon effectively ended the gold standard. So since then, the Federal Reserve note, which has become the primary name of what we used to consider a dollar, has become a depreciating fiat currency, backed by nothing but broken promises and shattered dreams, aka the American dream, for the majority, as the cost of living has skyrocketed and making the idea of just people being able to, to barely get by a common narrative. And think of it this way. It's like owning a car, but not having an engine in it. It looks functional on the outside, but its overall value is more of an illusion than substance because the car is not going nowhere. And that's the inevitable faith of people that rely on fiat currency in this day and age. Or you can look at your screen and the numbers might be going upward, but in actuality, you're not purchasing nowhere near as much as you think because the cost associated with living rises just as fast, if not faster. And so overall, the illusion is fading fast. And so with gold's rise from about $35 in the 1970s to today's price of over $2,600 tells a hell of a story. And that story is that the dollar, or it's like an aging star athlete, the dollar might still be in the game, but its glory days are clearly in the past. And the second thing we should all find interesting is the fact that gold is clearly a misunderstood heavyweight or an intentionally downplayed safe haven that even the central bankers don't even want to talk about. And it shouldn't be surprising that Jerome Powell has trillions of reasons on why he wants to deceive the masses. Just recently, Powell dismissed gold as merely a speculative asset compared to Bitcoin, where it says Fed Chair Powell says Bitcoin is like digital gold. He went on to say, people use Bitcoin as a speculative asset, right? It's like gold. Oh, really? Gold is speculative and it's been around and have been an anchor of monetary stability for thousands of years. And all of a sudden it's speculative. But then again, he said this on Wednesday during the New York Times deal book summit. He said, it's just like gold, only it's virtual. It's digital when he's talking about Bitcoin. And then he says, it's not a competitor for the dollar. He said, it's really a competitor for gold. And that's really how I think of it. So this is like saying a lighthouse and a flashlight are interchangeable. They both emit light, but one has guided ships for centuries by the other one runs on batteries. Only a fool would believe that one. One thing he failed to admit is that gold stability over centuries contrasts sharply with fiat currencies that come and go. 
every 50 to 100 years. And clearly central banks worldwide seem to agree about this. And it shouldn't be too surprising that official gold reserves outside the U.S. and the U.K. have soared from 51% in 1972 all the way to 78% as of today. And when you see headlines that say gold shines so far in 2024 as central banks invest heavily, clearly they're not racing to gold because of some boring pet rock that sits and does absolutely nothing. They clearly know what it does. And that's why they're running to it. As much as central bankers would love for people to think that gold is irrelevant, clearly their actions show other words. And so everybody has been paying attention, clearly know that the futures market were deliberately created to discourage physical gold ownership by fostering all these abnormal price swings as well as price suppression tactics. Look no further to this crazy ratio, as it says here, of 131 to 1. That's 131 futures, options, swaps, forwards, derivatives, and ETFs, or illusionary papers of wealth, all to one physical helo of gold, which as it says here, price per ounce, if all paper was converted to physical, $360,000, 700 as a rough ballpark figure. And so clearly we know that gold remains a cornerstone of economic stability because at the beginning and at the end of the day, it's a hedge against the volatility and destruction of currency themselves. And last but not least, the third most important subject matter that everyone's excited about is Bitcoin. As Jerome Powell said, the new digital goal, or is it fool's goal? Regardless, as of right now, it's been chosen. It's been tagged as a preferred medium by Wall Street, the VCs, Silicon Valley, and central bankers, for that matter. And so no matter what my personal opinion or feelings are about it, Bitcoin's proponents argue it's digital gold and that it serves as a decentralized antidote to fiat's the basement. And so some say it's too volatile, but its advocates love to counter that by saying, saying isn't the dollar's value just as unstable when measured against hard assets. And so whether we look at gold, which over the last year has appreciated nominally when measured in a dying currency, it can only continue to trend upward. And even looking at Bitcoin here, we see the same trend that it too since the beginning of the year has only continued to go upward. And above my head here, it's at 99,000 or 100,000, whatever number you want to use for it, and it's not done climbing higher. So what does that actually tell us? That it doesn't matter who's in the White House, whether they're Republican or Democrat, when the purchasing power of your currency is being stolen from you through two ways, failed fiscal policy, i.e. deficit spending and exponential borrowing, and corrupt monetary policy through fractional reserve lending and the privatization of all financial sectors denominated in that currency, anything that has monetary properties is going to go up because this thing is failing faster than we all can admit. And so clearly Bitcoin has its advantages. It's a blockchain technology or computer code, which mimics the primary characteristic of gold itself, which is its scarcity. And so as of right now, Bitcoin is the chosen one. But for people who know monetary history, gold can't be forgotten. And so as of now, because of all the euphoria and hype centered around the technology space, it's not surprising that with AI robotics and the digital asset space, they've all become quite trendy nowadays because there's a lot of currency to be made for those that are willing to ride this wave as we're witnessing the destruction of our currencies globally. And so Bitcoin, however, a lot of its dependency is on speculative markets and the lack of intrinsic value, which makes it more keen to that of a tech startup than a tried and true commodity such as gold. But then again, if there's interest and there's hype, there will always be a buyer. And it always helps now that the Bitcoin ETFs have made it easier for retail investors to enter the market. But it's also interesting that they also tether the cryptocurrency to the very financial system that it sought to disrupt. It's like using a sailboat to escape a sinking ship only to tie yourself to the same anchor. The truth is that both gold and Bitcoin highlight the dollar's declining relevance at this current time, where one is a relic of more honest monetary system and the other is a bold experiment sold as being decentralized. But both reveal a central truth because this is the problem here. It doesn't take much for people to get excited about either gold or Bitcoin or silver because at the end of the day, everyone's running from this because they recognize that this is the problem that the Federal Reserve note and the purchasing power of the consumer dollar is fading fast. Once again, just want to take a minute, share some thoughts in reference to the comparisons of gold and silver and how both of those items are not the problem. It's the underlying currency that's used that we in this current day and age give value to those items from. And that's because everything is priced in USD terms. It's the underlying of this East Coast Coast, West Coast, the East versus the West, the BRICS. We all know that this incoming president, his primary focus is to make sure that the Federal Reserve note, aka the dollar, based upon its current debt structure, remains in place. And that's why I believe Bitcoin was brought into the equation because they're going to use Bitcoin as a 21st century collateral that the government will take onto their balance sheet to then issue stable coins or what I'm going to refer to as Trump bucks in the days ahead and in future videos. Because I believe whether Kamala won or if Trump won, we will still get the same outcome 
Bitcoin will still be a part of their equation and the use of stable coins will be the proxy that keeps the Federal Reserve note and dollar system intact because the debt is unpayable and unsustainable. So you got to do something to distract people and to excite them to participate in this reset. So once again, just taking a minute, share my two cents on things. Hope you found value here. If you did, hit that thumbs up button, drop a comment down below. I love to read them and make sure you subscribe if you're new and then take this and share it on your socials so more people can find out an alternative side to what's really going on here and give them something to chew on and find out if it's real or not. Once again, it's their choice. And as always, I don't want to talk about the problems without presenting some possible strategies on how to make the manipulation your friend. The first one and most important one, creating your own personal gold standard by redeeming the paper and getting back into solid 24 karat gold. And this is the most affordable way to do that all the way from half a note to just as little as a 10 unit note. There's a price for everybody in between here. So once again, if you want to get physical and get your weight up in a new modernized form in the gold backs, then click the link in the description or go to buygoldnotes.com and grab you some while the price is still obtainable. And then last for my history buffs, if you enjoy adding a variety of sovereigns to your silver stack, then visit the silver team store where you can grab an assortment of very scarce and limited coins all the way from a 57 to 67 Mexican silver peso to a 90% silver mercury dime and a lot more. So once again, that's a part of the silver team. And if you want to have access to that same store for your own personal usage, then consider joining the silver team at mysilverteam.com. Or if you want to go directly to that page and perhaps buy one of those items, click the link in the description for the historic coins. It'll take you right there. But other than that, just taking a minute, presenting the problems, the strategies to go along with it to help you prepare and hopefully prosper in the days ahead. But other than that, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.